Next, uh, the Muhammad, Dr. Mohammed Musabi will talk about uh, his experiences at the UK system. Okay, good. Yeah, please welcome him. Good evening. Actually, as Jaid uh, said to me, I want to offer to Candy and Jahid. They already mentioned everything. So, honestly, I don't have that much to say. I don't why, right? Just uh, briefly, I would explain about UK system because I have lived in UK and studied in UK for almost seven years. Uh, for my background, I have uh, one bachelor and uh, actually one master from Iran, not Iraq. Iran, okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned this one to students as well. War happened in Iraq, okay? Not Iran. So, uh, after finishing my master from Iran, actually, I worked for almost three, four years in a stock exchange as trader and portfolio manager of the company. So I had experience and uh, actually industry experience. And my salary was not bad. I had like $1,000 per month, and not like 250 so. <laughs> <laughs> so, but after three, four years, I find that, okay, this is not what I'm interested. I'm much more interested in doing research. So the main motivation that uh, I wanted to apply abroad was to uh, do my PhD in a well-known university. And the main reason that I selected the University of Essex at that time is that, so I applied for PhD in the University of Essex, but I was offered one plus three year program. So this is a kind of program you would see in, university, in uh, UK universities, one year master, three year PhD, right? So we have one plus three year program in UK system. And University of Essex is kind of famous university, especially in the field of social science and economy in UK and the world. Uh, but after one year, what happened? I had enough money to be self-funded. Um, but after one year, there was kind of sanctions by USA on Iran. So as a result, it affected on economy in my country. And all my saving was in my domestic currency, right? So the students who studied international finance with me know that we, three months, actually the domestic currency of my country depreciated three times versus US dollar. It means 300% depreciation. So I find that I cannot continue studying self-funded in the UK. So I started looking for scholarship, right? But luckily I had good, actually, profile. The reason is that number one, I had job experience. Number two, I had two masters with distinction, right? Two masters with distinction. Number three, I had research experience. Like the time I was applying for PhD scholarship, I had like three, four papers published, two books published, and I attended several conferences, right? So uh, I applied for three universities, University of uh, Edinburgh, University of Warwick, and I think UCL. So, uh, and I got offered from University of Edinburgh a full PhD scholarship. And you know, in the UK system, universities uh, usually offer very uh, limited number of scholarship per year. It's not like the US system, because US universities receive a lot of funds from the government, but UK universities usually are self-regulated universities. And the main income of the UK universities is from uh, tuition fees, right? So I would start a little bit uh, explaining about UK. So in the UK, you have uh, Great Britain, including England, Scotland, and Wales, and United Kingdom, including uh, those three countries, plus Northern Ireland, right? So this terminology of UK, first of all, we need to know about that. And the popular programs in the UK are business and administrative studies, engineering technology, social economy, and 
the health studies, computer science, and the same, right? So the business and administrative studies are one of those popular programs in the United Kingdom. And there is more than 130 universities in the United Kingdom. It's unbelievable. It's a small country, but huge number of the universities available in this country. And some of them are really ancient universities like Oxford, Cambridge, right? And also Edinburgh is around 500 year old university. And some of them are newer, like Nottingham, Khan, Warwick, Kent, etc., right? As I say, UK universities are all uh, kind of independent and self governing universities, right? So, university more or less, they follow their own regulations, right? Programs. And also, they, as I say, they, they see a limited uh, fund from the government, so they are self funded. They have to make money. This is business. So if you expect scholarship from UK universities, you should work very hard. You should have very good profile. Um, so the academic year is usually 30 weeks, divided into three terms, um, or sometimes two semesters. And for Oxford and Cambridge, it's 24 weeks, right? So you have three semesters usually in UK universities. Uh, and the number of weeks per semester is around 10 weeks. It's not like here for American system, 15 or 16 weeks. It's just 10 weeks. And master program, a top full-time master is usually one year, one calendar year, which is very efficient rather than, I mean, the US system is two years, right? So if you want to have a quick master, you can choose uh, UK, right? And cost of study for non-EU students, it varies based on which university you pick up, right? So I can say for a full-time master, it could be between 13 to 25,000 pounds per year, depending on the university that you pick up, right? And cost of living in UK depends on how you want to live, where you want to live, you want to have your own accommodation or living with others in the same flat, for example, so it varies. Um, so undergraduate and postgraduate course uh, searching needs, I put some websites here for you here. Uh, so later maybe Professor Jerry want to share the uh, PPT for you guys so you can use them. And uh, this is a kind of QR ranking 2017 and 18. You don't, you are not in 18, but the ranking for 2018 is uh, existing the QR ranking. So Cambridge, Oxford, UCL, Imperial College, King's College, Edinburgh, Manchester, LEC, Bristol, and Warwick. And uh, as you see, this is the uh, UK ranking and also uh, world ranking, right? So the application package with Pajani more or less explained about uh, the main uh, items in your application. So personal statements, very, very important is the way that you sell yourself to a uh, committee, all right? And references, I can say number two is the reference. Reference letter, it's very important factor in your application. Uh, qualifications, admission test results, and usually you will get one of three session, unconditional offer, conditional offer, and unsatisfactory. Sometimes, depending on the program, you will receive conditional offer means that you have to, for example, pass IELTS like 7.5 or 7 in order to get unconditional offer. So about personal statement, uh, I'm not going to repeat what uh, Dr. Jack had explained already. So you're, uh, you have one chance to sell yourself, right? And there are some uh, details about how to prepare an SOP. Uh, show university and college admissions that you are suited to the course, you are motivated and dedicated, and you have relevant knowledge, experience gained from education, you understand the demands for the course, and you will fit into the university environment. How about the recommendation letter? So more or less you guys uh, come to uh, my office or other professor ask for a recommendation letter. Uh, 
I think one of the factors which affect on my uh, application uh, package is successful for getting a scholarship from the University of Edinburgh was a good recommendation letter I received from two of my professors. And there are some factors you need to make sure are in your recommendation letter. Unfortunately, some of the professors here are very busy, as they are, and they provide or offer a kind of standard recommendation letter for you guys. Uh, if you want to have a recommendation from me, right, I guess uh, you need to do your best to push your professors to make a distinguished and a special recommendation. That's very important. A standard recommendation uh, is very high likely that you guys uh, apply with the same agent for the same universities. And just like the same university received 10, 15 applications from the same school, from the same professor, right? And all the recommendation range, uh, letters are almost the same, right? So you will see what's going to happen, right? So my suggestion to you is that you try to have very distinguished and specific recommendation letters, OK? So in the recommendation letter, you, you need to mention, I mean, uh, professors should mention your relation to the applicant or their relation to you guys as the professors if you have a joint project with them, research project with them, they can mention their academic abilities. How well do you know that we can set an award? Can you comment on applicants' present performance and future potentials? If available, please provide the students rank in the class, right? Do you consider that they can see the result in true reflection of his or her abilities? Please comment on your on any research experience that under the test. Uh, unfortunately, I see this is a lack uh, of research experience within our students here. So, hopefully, in future, because right now there's a new decision by the business school that all business students should write down the thesis in the year four in order to be graduated. Right. So it could help a little bit to improve this part of your uh, profile. And also employment, so having you for chosen program, powers of expression, interest, other information. And there are some other criteria that usually, once you apply for a position, uh, sorry, in a, for a program in a university, they contact us, right? And they ask us individually to uh, rank you based on this criteria. Like intellectual ability, communication in English. As Professor Candy mentioned, you should improve your skills in presentation, right? selling yours, emotional imagination, imagination and global creativity, motivation for studies, willingness to take responsibility. Right? So bottom line, um, when I compare myself in your age with you guys, you are much, much, much more ahead. Believe me, in the age of 22, 3, I didn't even imagine I'm going to be abroad. I decided to go abroad in the age of 25, 26. And when I wanted to start application, I find out, OK, I need to do GMAT, IELTS, GRE, blah, blah, blah. And in my country, none of these examinations hold. I find out I should go to another country to take GMAT test, to go to another country to take IELTS. So you have a lot of opportunity, and you are much, much more ahead of me. So be optimistic and try your best. And I'm sure you will be able to get a good position and good university. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And Dr. Musabi, we'll see. Okay, where are you? Okay, here. Yeah, the Dr. Musabi, yeah, he got the PhD from the University of Edinburgh. 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 No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Edinburgh.
Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Okay. Edinburgh. Okay. Edinburgh. Okay. Not Edinburgh. Okay. Edinburgh. <laughs> Edinburgh. Okay. And he got uh, MS, uh, the master's in in finance at the University of Essex, and uh, he come from. Uh, he come from